Okay, so we begin with an overview of Adobe Photoshop. And what we can see is we have our workspace right here. And just as in um, Illustrator, we have our tools. Now, let's actually come on over and you can see that I have my workspace set, Essentials, Design, Painting. So what I want to do is I just want to reset my Essentials workspace and just keep it in Essentials. Now what I have here is I have my tool, I have my menu, and I can see some other windows that I have, right? I can, and I can turn them on and off to see what you have here. I have the application frame on. I like that application frame. It kind of gives it a place to sit. And then we have some of these other windows over here. We have our adjustments window. This one's open. If yours is not open, again, you can just come and find it. Window adjustments. We have swatches. Swatches. We have styles. Um, and much, much more. Now, the important, uh, very important, probably the most important ones that you'll use will be your layers. Layers are really big in Photoshop. And really our tool panel again, and here are our tools. Um, now, Photoshop is different than Illustrator in that Photoshop is a bitmap raster program. So there we have it. A couple more things. So here we can see we have a new file. And whenever we see this um, gray and white, it's transparent. Okay, so that's just the transparent background. So let me create a new file, file new, and see what I can do here is I can change this. I could change this to having a white background. Now what's great about Photoshop is we can save things with a transparency. Now if we ever save it as a JPEG, JPEGs always have white areas around them, even if you have it transparent in Photoshop. But you can save your file as a PNG or a GIF file and they preserve transparency. Now let's take a look at this new window and see what we have here and we can see that we can, there are presets so we could come in and say oh we want to work for the web, for film and video, mobile devices, so there's all kinds of stuff in here and I think that this is an area we're going to see change, continue to change especially as more designs being done for smartphones and e-tablets. All right, so we can work in a couple different uh, formats here, and definitely we're always thinking about pixels, but we can work in pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, picas. Picas has to do um, with, that's a measurement for type. <clears throat> we can even do columns. Now, mostly, though, you'll find yourself working in inches and pixels. So I could come right here and say, oh, okay, this document at 8 by 10 at 300 PPI, at 300 pixels per inch, will be 2,400 pixels by 3,000 pixels. Now, let's see when I lower this, and I could do that too. Now, this will just be very big. Actually, let's keep it at 300. 300 is <clears throat> what we would use when we were working with print. Okay, now, but let's say that you go, you, you set your uh, window for 300 PPI, and then you go and you take a photograph from the web that's 72 PPI. Well, it's going to be really small. Okay, so, and as you work in Photoshop, you'll start to get used to this whole pixel kind of thing. But if we were going to create a new file, and we wanted to put it up, we wanted to print it, 300 PPI pixels per inch is really what we're going to work at. Now you can see that this is big, even just creating this file, it's 20.6 megabytes. Now if we were to lower this, and let's take a look, if I was to say 72, oh, it still is big, but it would be a smaller, it would be smaller. Once we would get in and start working, you would see that it actually would be a smaller, a smaller file. <clears throat> now we can even get into more advanced, and we don't really want to worry so much about this. This has to do with our color profile when we're printing. Let's talk a little bit about color mode too. Uh, RGB is the color as it appears on our screen. CMYK has to do with when we're printing. Again, that, but sometimes you'll work in RGB when you print too, um, depending upon the printer that you are printing to. All right, so let's create a new file. I'll say file new, okay. And there we have it. <clears throat> now, let's take a look at placing an image in here. So I could come to file and I have a couple of photographs on my desktop, file, place, and I'm going to come to my desktop and I am going to find this image. And I can't remember what my image is. I'll come, hopefully this one is the one I want. File, place, okay. So there we have it. Now I can see that this image 
is way smaller than my image than my picture. Hold on for one minute. Okay, so I can see that this image is way smaller than my um, than my document. So what I might want to do is just come on in and crop it. Now the reason why that is, I can check my image size, image, image size. Um, oh, and that's why. Um, it's 33 inches by 41 inches. So what I might want to do is resample my image and actually that's not what I want to do. I need to constrain my proportions and if I up the resolution, three, oh, that's not what I want to do either. All right, let's actually lower this. Let's lower this to 10 across and we'll say, okay. All right, let's lower it even more. <clears throat> so we can come on in and we can say image, image size. So that's a way that we can lower our image. Maybe we want to put our width at six. We'll say, okay. Okay. Now, probably what we really want to do though is just come on in and crop this image. So we come on in, we have our crop tool right here. I can come on in, I can just draw <clears throat> a crop around this. Now, I have my crop set, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to say none. And I'm going to click this and I'm going to say no, do not crop. All right, because when you grab your crop tool, you can actually I was doing, you can actually set the width, but I don't want to set the width and the height. I want to keep it just as it is. So I can just come and I can click and then I can double click. And now my image is cropped. Now I can see that I'm just at 16%. Okay, so I can zoom on in. I can take this little zoom guy and I can click. And now I am at 56%. Ooh, and I can zoom in crazy, crazy. And sometimes you're going to find yourself zoomed in a whole lot. Now let's say that I wanted to even crop this image even more. Well, I could do that too. Again, I could come on in. I could grab, oh, that's my selection tool. I could grab my crop tool. Now, we also see the slice and the slice select tool here. The slice and the slice select tool are used when we're working on the web. So let's say I wanted to change this composition up a little bit more. Well, I could do that. I could come on in here and really focus in on these two. Right here, I could make this a little bit bigger. And then to crop it, I can double click it, click it. I can also come back and hit my place arrow and hit crop. And there we have it. Now, what we're gonna see, let's just look at our layers real quick. When we place an image in, we can see that we have, our background layer is always locked. And we can see this little black um, and white little picture right here. All right, that's what we'll always get that when we place an object in. Now that is actually a smart object. And if we wanted to change, work with the color of this image, you'll see if I come on up and I say, oh, image, image adjustments, this is all, I can't do any of these. And this is to work with the color. What I need to do is I need to rasterize this layer. Okay, because it's coming in as a smart object. So I need to make it editable in Photoshop. So I click it, I come to layer, and I come to smart objects, and I rasterize, and there we have it. Now, I could even get rid of this background layer if I'd like to, and voila, there we have our image. Now I could come on in, image adjustments, I could say black and white, and I'll just hit OK. Beautiful. All done. Thanks for listening. A little intro to Photoshop, getting familiarized with some of these different features.